Hi guys. Hey. Hi. Hey guys. Hi, this is Jeffrey Combs. I'm Connor Trenier. I'm Dominic Casing. And our visitor here. I'm Andy Robinson. I'm Erica LaRose. Admiral Forrest here. And this is the Shuttlepod Show. The Shuttlepod Show. And this is the Shuttlepod Show. And this is the Shuttlepod Show. And this is Shuttlepod Show. This is Shuttlepod Show. Shuttlepod! Pinkskins. I'm Connor, that's Dom, and we're also leaving. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to set up for the Shuttle Pod show live, and you yes. are our guest. Yeah. So, ah, do you like that? Yeah. Huh? Huh? We thought we'd turn the camera yeah. on you. That's right. And uh, let's, uh, let's hear your stories about Trek. So get uh, your powder out. Yeah. Get a little freshening up, because yeah. you're going to be on camera. Yeah. All right? Aye, aye, aye. All right, so... We'll see you in a little bit. Back shortly. Ciao. Thank you. Gonna go and do my convention thing. Got my costume, I'm going now. Yeah, we're having a ball. It's Star Trek, y'all. Hey, Dan, come on. Beam me up. We are here live on the Shuttle Pod Show, and we have very special guests, you guys. Thank you for being here. And now I'm going to welcome Connor Trenier and Domna Keating. Okay. There we go. Uh, wow. I mean, we've done it, I guess. So uh, here we are on, on the set of our show, which is sort of unusual. We've, we've been all over the place. I need a As you all know, um, from location to location, uh, we still have um, drench. Sorry, <laughs> wash. We've got wash. I, I love how uh, wash. Give wash a tamale. Who for designed sake. the T-shirt that has wash on the T-shirt? Oh, Nina. Yeah. Nina. Where are you? She's not here. She's in Spain. Oh. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Lucky Nina. Hola, <laughs> Nina. Thank you. I hope you're watching. You're keeping our little plant alive. <laughs> so um, what we're going to do tonight on our show is uh, involve you. We might even just pick you out of the audience uh, for questions and um, maybe some trivia. We'll see how what time we have. We need to get out of here by, what, 8.40, 8.30, 8.30? start moving around 8.30. Yeah. It's cold overtime. Cold overtime. <laughs> We don't want to have to pay for it. And also, we got an uh, after party to get to. Uh, Todd has put together an amazing uh, trivia competition that we're really excited about. <laughs> Tiffany has spent a lot of time on a cosplay competition. And I know some of you were planning on cosplaying. Where's our blue underwear? Oh! Uh, there's our blue underwear. <laughs> Spoilers. You know, I, I thought we would start with, um, maybe you all know this uh, little saying. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. <laughs> Treks and Trekkers. Treks and Trekkers. Treks and Trekkers. Welcome to the Shuffle Ball Show. Show. It's just over a year ago now, isn't it? A year. That, uh, yeah, it's a year, pretty much a year ago. Uh, at a building literally across the street. Mm -hmm. that uh, Literally across the I was dragged into this. <laughs> <laughs> By his truly knowing him. And uh, God bless, man. It's been a new lease on life, and I, I really want to thank you guys for, for you know doing all this with me. Oh my God! Yeah, it's been and extraordinary. Uh, a, a little history, maybe you don't know this. Dominic. That um, Dom and I it was a couple years ago in Vegas at the convention. Yeah. We're standing sort of you know backstage. Mid pandemic, right at the beginning of the. We just finished the first lockdown, really, hadn't we? There were still you know we're taking photo ops, and there was like a. Plexiglass there was a, there was a between tent. the actors and the... Uh, I was outside in a tent in the f***ing raging heat in Vegas heat. With, with no air con and some fan. I mean, I look like f***ing Beyonce, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're standing there, and, and uh, Garrett is in front of us. He's next, and um, asking him what's going on. And 
and he said he'd been doing the Delta Flyers and uh, talked to me. Yeah, Delta Flyers. Yeah. Delta Flyers. Delta Flyers. <laughs> And, uh, you know, expressed how much fun he was having with it, he and Robbie, and... That's when I kicked him, like that. <laughs> yeah. I went, and it was like, dude, well, hey, we could do something like that. Yeah. And uh, not knowing anything what the Delta Flyers were doing, and uh, truly, with what you've seen about our show, we have a, a sort of a different uh, setup and maybe goal, I'm not sure. Then I told Mark, I'd done a movie with Mark, when was that? Um, like 2018. 2018. October in Maine, Dark Harbor. That's right, Dark. Yeah. Dark Harbor. <laughs> Dark, Dark Harbor. Harbor. Dark Harbor. And uh, I, I believe he's done two movies with Mark, but who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> I would know, Sid. <laughs> And uh, uh, I told Mark about this, this idea that we had, you know, and by the way, I, I, my idea of doing our show was, you know, the whole sort of Zoom idea that, you know, Dom would be in his house and I'd be in mine and we'd have the cans on and we'd interview someone. And then Mark said to me, he was Talk like... shit about them for a yeah. bit. <laughs> and then Mark no, said... No, you can't do that. <laughs> Mark said to me, he was like, please let me produce this. I will knock this out of the park. It was over your pool table. Yeah. And you owed me like $1,200. Let's, hang on. Let's back up to the pool table moment. Yeah. <laughs> Not over the pool right. table, around the pool table. Hey, Felix, <laughs> bend over. <laughs> it was still fresh in my mind. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Mark said that, and, and I was like, oh, okay. I'm not sure what that means. And, and pretty quickly, uh, <laughs> I knew what bend over meant. We never said bend over. Dom did. Uh, and, and, and Mark said, you know, let, let, let me do this. I can, I can kill it. And I s said, sure. And uh, sure enough, I mean, really, Mark, uh, to your credit, this, this event alone mm. would not have happened without Mark. No. Um, the fact... <laughs> The fact that we do the show the way that we do it wouldn't happen without Mark. No. And, um, you know, there's, there's so much credit that goes to, to Mark Cartier, and, and I'm, I feel blessed that we've got him on our side and um, thankful. Yes. Thank you, Mark. You don't want to make me cry, you ass. No, we're trying. Okay, we're trying to make her cry. <laughs> <laughs> and as I said last night, as an addendum. <laughs> You know, the girl that has to put up with him doing all this. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah you know, and, and, I, and, and, you. and Erica brings so much to a show that could be just a sausage factory. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we're, we're thankful to... Yeah. Oh. He loves her. He loves best. her more. That's <laughs> okay. And that's that's rightly so. <laughs> so I just wanted to give you know. A, well, that's a, what she a, thinks. A brief history. Oh, pool table nights. As to, <laughs> <laughs> I won that money back, by the way. It was my pool table. He totally won it back. <laughs> so um, well, uh, so we uh, let's turn this a bit a bit around. So uh, uh, how, I mean, how long ago did you all start watching the shuttle pod from the from the first get go? Yeah, first pretty much. Like first of July? No, July-ish. July-ish, I was going to say. That was my birthday. <laughs> We're kind of extreme. We have someone in the audience here who actually bought our very first piece of merchandise. Yeah, I met her. Right? Is that, right is that there. Catherine? Right there, you there. yeah, there she is. She also bought the very first pass to this live event. So, so yeah. thank you. Catherine. Come on, stand up. That's right. Now listen, you guys, when we, when we play tri trivia, I promise you a car, and you're getting one. You're getting the car. We actually have a very, um, uh, 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 there's a lot of people who've been here since day one, and there are some people who've been here just for a month or two or something. Yeah. Uh, there's someone, one of our Patreon members and uh, one of our volunteers, Melissa, where are you? Yeah. She's like, I just found your show in November, and now I'm at my very first Star Trek event ever. Let me ever. ask you this. Uh, 
of the audience, who is here for the first time at an oh. event? I mean, come on. Oh, wow. Really? Look at that. My lord. That. No, never been to a convention. At least a third or more wow. half even, man. Wow. Whoa. Thanks, See? Guys. That's what we're going for. Wow. Are you That's having so fun? Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Wow. That's really cool. That's fantastic. What is it that, uh, someone answer me this, uh, what is it that, that sort of got you out to come to this? What, was it, you know, what is it? I mean, you guys. You guys. Is it? Guys. No kidding. Aww. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> That goddamn plan. <laughs> he acts like he acts like a curmudgeon about it, but he really loves the plan. Connor called me one day uh, in the last couple of months, and he's like, "Listen, I just got off the phone with my parents. Yeah, and true. they are concerned about Wash. And I got to tell you, I'm really worried about." our tree and whether or not he survives. And I was like, yeah. it'll be fine. My, my, so when I was a kid. I have to say, I have a vested interest now. You in do, you lived in your house for a while. <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, my parents being sort of the hippies that they were in a way, um, we had an avocado tree as our Christmas tree one year. That's oh. full hippie. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's, that's all granola and. <laughs> what did you get for, for presents? The, the avocado pips? <laughs> We got nothing. We got nothing. We got yeah. Nothing at all. No. Uh, and my, my, my dad was like, he gave me a list of things to make uh, fresh, wash, whatever his name is, <laughs> uh, healthy. And uh, it's, it's not working. Uh. No, I'm kidding. It is. He's no, gonna it's be, working. He's yeah, going to be looking. fine. Yeah, he yeah, looks good. New growth up top. Yeah. He's getting young again. Yeah. yeah. Like every 75-year-old man. He's got new growth up top. He's going to be fine. <laughs> Uh, so uh, back to the shuttle pod show. Um, what do I want to ask you about that? Uh, is, is is you're enjoying the interviews we have with this with the guests we've had, right? Um, is it different from from other shows? Because I don't I don't watch these other shows. So how? And what makes it different in your in your mind's eye that you that you? We've got microphones we, here, yeah, so somebody. We, I was going to say, as to say as a Star Trek yeah. podcaster, I can tell you it's very different from my show. <laughs> I think one of the major differences is your production value. Your show is amazingly well done. Mm -hmm. It's well produced, it's well directed. You all do an amazing job with everything. But more than that, when you speak to people, when you interview them, you're not just asking them trivia, you're learning about their lives, right. who they are, mm -hmm. um, how you've all sort of grown up you know in this community together and i think that's wonderful that's nice yeah, oh, that's yeah. what we and we that we stumbled into that really uh, probably but we're honest i mean it's you know i've started watching a lot of trek now uh but initially it was really because well i know one thing i know is actors and i i want to hear about you as an actor and how you started out what was the you know the germination of of that idea that you might do this one day actually for a living and that's where that sort of that you know for both of us that 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 interested us, didn't it? Yeah, it's it's a to a person, it's a unique story, you know. And as you've you've heard, you've got Denise Crosby telling her story about you know her trip to Mexico and and Nana growing up the way that she did, Michael Dorn, you know, you know Andy Robinson, my God, you yeah, know, his story was insane. It's uh, too bad, Andy. Was initially we thought he was going to stick around, and uh, I really wanted to. He he worked with half the cast from. Yesterday's play, you know, oh, to talk the, to the, 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 yeah. the live edition. He said Walter Matthau was the greatest actor he ever worked with. Ever worked with. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I took and that then, as a personal then he said, then he said I, Connor. I really, I gotta tell you. Connor, you were second. That <laughs> 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 really bummed me out for at least a couple of hours. <laughs> Where's your drink? <laughs> uh, it's close by. Okay. Uh, anything else anybody wants to say about what, what drew you to the show? We've got over here. Yep, got one right here. I, I'm a big believer in organic conversations, and that's what you guys do. You just let it flow. You ask one question, and it could last for half an hour, and you just kind of go along with it, and you get that's how you get the stories with the organic conversations. It's not just a Q&A. No, thank you. Oh, that's great. true. It yeah. is uh, a new skill set, uh, the listening bit. <laughs> 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 you really have to... <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> <laughs> He's passionate. 
I am passionate. Um, but yeah, it's been, uh, yeah, it, to be in the moment and uh, to listen and, uh, and then let the next, as you say, the next question flow out of what just got said. And uh, one of the great things I think is that, you know, we've had such a luxury, Dom, you and I over the years of, we were talking about this back in the green room uh, with Nanan Sirak about there, there's just something wonderful about, you, you get to know someone to an extent and then yeah. you kind of become a little bit of a family and then you don't see them for a year or two years. But the next time that you see them, you fall right back into it, you know, and, and not all of the stories, but enough of them we know. We've already heard. We've already had drinks and dinner with these friends of ours. And the opportunity and ability to share that and, and their willingness to do that, mm. uh, I think, is a, just a sort of a testament to um, the friendship, the friendships that we've, uh, we've, we've garnered from being in this world. Yeah, and the family and the, you know, it's more than a franchise. It, it truly is a family. And uh, I love being around actors, I've got to tell you. They're the best storytellers. <laughs> yeah. they do, apart from the Irish. Apart from the Irish. <laughs> I happen to be both. I happen to be both. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> you know, and I think part of it, too, and this was, uh, again, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give Mark credit for this, is that, you know, the idea of doing this live show was that we wanted to, and I've said this to some of you over the course of the last two days, is that, you know, there's, there's been no... Um, the convention world seems to be slipping away, which is odd because, you know, there's like 11 new shows or whatever on TV mm. now. And you'd think that it would be like, you know, a new golden age of, of bringing back the, the fan community. And it seems to actually be the opposite. It's sort of, you know, getting less and less. And, and um, again, uh, to Mark's credit, to, to make an effort, and this has been an effort, to invite you all and to be the, 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 the part of the, 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 the seed that's planted that we want to build, which is literally just the community getting together, sharing conversation, drinks and food, and talking to us and us sharing our own stories. Yeah. And just... And hearing your stories. And hearing your stories and just, and just building that back up. And that was really the goal for this. And I thank you. Yeah, to the bottom of my heart, building for community. for for being here and being a part of this this you know inaugural event. I think we're going to try and reach out. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you, darling. We'd love to we'd love to start including some of the the, the cast members from the new shows, and uh, I'll be happy to sit down and watch them. And look, uh, do you, how much do you, do you? I mean, are you legacy show watchers mostly, or are you? No. Oh, yeah. All of it. You love it all. You're loving because strange. They're awesome. You're loving strange new worlds, and you're loving. Apparently, season lower decks. Apparently, Discovery has sort of found its sea legs, and yeah. it's uh, Picard. You love Picard. Oh, yeah. I think. Uh, say again. Season three. Season three. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I think Michael Dawn has uh, already agreed to come back when that started to air so we can talk about it. Yeah. yeah. So you'd be right up for talking and just doing a whole episode on Michael and Picard. Uh, I, we kind of skipped over something because I was about to cry on stage. Um, Connor was saying something about us being a sausage fest, and that's why Erica is so important. Yeah. And I didn't want to uh, move on too far without uh, talking about, uh, really, just for a moment, how important Erica is and why she's on, yeah. the, why she's on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you, Mark. One, we all behave better because of her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it would be pretty bad. And, two, I, and we've talked about this before, but Erica can talk to any human being alive. Uh, the friends yeah. she makes in the weirdest places are always like, I told this story before, uh, she'll be like, hey, we're going to Santa Barbara. I met this woman at the airport and she's amazing and we're going to her castle for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay. Oh, I know her. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Uh, so thank you for, how, and, and also your perspective on, on, you know, your outside perspective on us. Your willingness to learn about Star Trek through this process is yeah. really important, especially like to new fans. I like the idea that we are helping build new fans of the show. That's kind of a goal of ours. Yeah, I, I, this has been such a amazing experience, and I've talked about this on some other podcasts that we've been on recently. You have? Yeah. Ha 
<laughs> How it works. Are you double know? dipping? It's just amazing. <laughs> Anyways, no, I'm just joking. I mean, yes, it is. Both of you guys. You two are such a cute couple. <laughs> we are the oh. old couple. Nom, Odd. nom, 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 nom. Odd, but cute. <laughs> yeah. No, and uh, working with Mark, Dominic, and Connor have been amazing. And it's, what's been also amazing is um, experiencing the fan experience and what you guys bring to the table and how much you're willing to commit to making us better. And it's, it's insane. I've never witnessed anything like this. And I just want to say thank you, you guys, because you yeah. make this what it is. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Like, it's... it's it brings tears to my eyes, even as someone who hasn't been on a Star Trek show or hasn't been to a bunch of conventions or, you know, this is new for me. And it's still so... You weren't seven of nine? It's still so heartwarming. <laughs> you weren't seven of nine. It's so sweet. So thank you. And um, yeah, thanks, Mark, for the compliment. I just think that I also, based on what you're saying, like, you know... There's so many of you who volunteered for this. Yes. Oh, yeah. You know, there are so many of you who, who Wash spent gang. time and, yeah. And, and, Can you believe it? Wash has got a gang. And energy to, to, make, gang. to make this be what this actually We're is. Sorry. And without you, we couldn't have done it. So, to you all. Thank you. One of the things that's interesting, and I know that we're going to get to, like, we'd like to ask them some questions, then we have a uh, uh, Red Shirt podcast coming up, but uh, I would... I'd also like to say about uh, one of the things, Erica, uh, learning about the show, we're all kind of having an opportunity now to, to relearn about the show. They were in the show. Yeah. I've seen the show since I was born, every episode and every frame of every movie and every series. Um, she's seeing it largely for the first time. Uh, we've introduced uh, a new uh, part of our show that we haven't launched yet, but uh, we brought on this very articulate, yes. very wonderful human being, Joe Bano, who has uh, never seen any of Star Trek ever, and he's incredibly literate, uh, and he's looking at it with a fresh eye. Uh, and He's a very cool dude, Joe. Very cool. Um, and he's... He's reviewing episodes. He's reviewing pilots of all the series, and then he's going to go into all the episodes. And uh, our hope is that we're all going to watch it together, watch those episodes, watch his reviews, and have a conversation about Star Trek. Someone who's just seeing it for the first time, some people who are in it, some of us who are fans, and sort of find a way to make a Star Trek school conversation congeal out of those different... Uh, points of view, and we're really excited about it. Uh, we haven't launched it yet, but... What are we going to call that segment? Star Trek. School with Joe. Star Trek. Yeah, School, School with Joe. <laughs> School with Joe. School, School with Joe. <laughs> School <that>? Trek. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's going to be great. Uh, he's a very smart, uh, erudite guy. Can't believe he's never watched a frame of Star Trek. I won't say how old he is because he would get angry at me. Chris knows Joe very well. We've known him for about... I'll never tell. Yeah. <laughs> He's a piece I of, also uh, want to do a, a old. real... He's old enough to have seen every episode alive and not seen any of it. So. That's right. I also want to give a shout out to uh, all of the people, Chris and yes. all the fellows back yeah. here who... Chris, Tran, Joe, Kyle, who, and I mean, Tran, Tran, Tran J. You Bird. guys, they work tirelessly to make what you see on Sundays look and sound the yeah. way that it does. And we could not ever do this without them. Oh, yeah. not even, no. So, Shrand and like, yes, all, all of these people, uh, Kyle, Tranjay, Chris, everyone, but uh, I have to give a very special shout out to Shranjay who, uh, and, and to Chris, who have made a habit um, of late of staying up until like two in the morning on Saturday night, Sunday morning, so that we can make sure that our episode goes live on time on Sunday. For Mimosa time. For Mimosa Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> And without that, guys, this wouldn't happen. Do you guys like... So thank you, Shran. Yes. Thank you, Shran. Wait, Shran, will you stand up for a second, thank please? You, yeah. That's Shran's here right there. Thank you. Chris is already standing. Man, this is like the end, isn't it? Woo! It's great. Yeah. Do you guys, uh, thank you, Chris. Do you guys like the new uh, Sunday morning premiere thing? You like it? Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's new about it? <laughs> Is it just me? <laughs> well, uh, we only started it a few months, a couple of months ago. What did we do? You mean it's like the chat the, thing? The, chat oh, the chat thing, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> You've been there. I've been You've on been it. There. Yeah. yeah, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> not a bot. No, not a bot. <laughs> well, a little bit of bot. <laughs> I, I, I go and clean my teeth and leave it to the bot. <laughs> I, I, I think I'd, we should turn it back to our guests. Yes. Well, Do you have any questions? Yeah, yes. well, why, don't we, why don't we start, if you guys don't mind, why don't we start with our uh, 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 red shirt podcast cats? Oh, yeah. Uh, Zach and Chris. Fellas. Do you want to come up? We got two chairs yeah, for you. We got chairs yeah. for you right come over on here. Up. Come on up. Come on up. While they're making their way up, we, t- we talked. I, I have a question for Mark. Um, We've talked a little bit, you mentioned some things that are coming in the future for the show, and we've gotten a chance to kind of see the show from a different angle. Can you talk a little bit about the logistics of setting up a podcast on the scale that Shuttle Pod Show is? And <laughs> I mean, without giving away the secret <laughs> sauce, but like, what all... What were some of the things that went on that to-do list initially? You have no idea. Oh, I... <laughs> it's very Quit. logistical. Oh, Quit. sure. Quit the full-time job, <laughs> empty the life savings, <laughs> never sleep. You know, check, check, check. Awesome. I mean, uh, I mean, look, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six cameras. Yeah. Yeah. At least. You know, look, some of you have donated this stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. God oh, like, bless you. you. Seriously. High five. You know, we literally. I mean, I'm not kidding. We could not do this show without that support. Without you. Yeah. No. And no, you are a huge part of it. We and literally could not be doing the show the way we do it without uh, the generosity of our fans. No. Uh, so much of what we use uh, has been uh, gifted by our fan base. Uh, it's uh, so much of what we I can tell you for literally with my hand on my heart him him and her we haven't seen a penny not one, not penny. one penny not one we had two lunches <laughs> <laughs> they were we may have had I three. kid you not we may have had three <laughs> we've had three but we are this is uh, we're doing this uh, all for to build something to build. Yes. and uh, God bless you this is this keeps us going that yeah. you have showed up like this this weekend you are a uh, part of our foundation. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's, it's vitally important. Yeah, it's really, and this is important. When things get really hard and it's like, how the f*** are we going to make this work? Like the schedule, the schedule, uh, the, the, the financial responsibility, the everything. And then, it's, and then a box shows up in our uh, mailbox and it's another, it's another, it's another camera. camera. Yeah. And it's like, shit, we can actually do the thing we wanted to do now. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's so yeah. incredible. It is. It really Aww. is. Best fans in the world, beyond a doubt. I mean, uh, I don't think even you too has these sort of fans. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, we want to thank uh, uh, the Random Red Shirt podcast uh, guys, Zach and Chris. Yeah, thank you. Uh, for making their way here. One of the things that we want to do as a show is, uh, in our effort to build our community, is to uh, find other shows that are doing incredible work in the Star Trek world and try to figure out how to support them. Uh, and these guys have a great show if you've not seen Big them. Big hand of applause yeah. for these guys. Yeah. Uh, so we wanted to invite them here and have them uh, kick, uh, I guess we're already in this by about a half an hour at least, but you know, <laughs> kick, kick it off with some questions. Are we on a podcast right now? We're on a podcast. Oh right? my word. It's my first one. Ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. boys and girls, tracks and trackers. Yeah. <laughs> a random red shirt podcast. Yeah, well, thanks guys. for having us. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, thanks for coming. This is fantastic. You know, Chris and I started our podcast back in somewhat early springtime uh, 2021. And one of the ideas for our podcast we got from watching you guys. Oh. So you guys inspired us to do our really? podcast. Oh, we're that yeah. old. Wow. <laughs> yeah. We're legacy. Yeah, we're legacy. <laughs> <laughs> One year in, we're legacy. Yeah, so uh, we, we really enjoyed it. You know, we're not exclusively a Star Trek podcast. We do talk a lot about Trek. We talk about a lot of things, science fiction and pop culture. Uh, we've been going through all the different series for each season on our podcast. Season five is going to feature yours truly, Enterprise. So we can't wait Sorry. to talk about that. Yes, absolutely. Um, and so Erica and Mark, thanks again for coming on our show. Double Thank dipping, I guess. You're welcome. Apparently. <laughs> and, um, and coming on talking about Shuttle Pod show, about this live event. I've had an absolute blast. What about you, Chris? Yeah, it's been incredible. We really appreciate it. And when, when we learned about this event and the opportunity to come, 
It was great. Zach, Zach told me about it, and I was like, yeah, this is great. And so when Erica, Erica, you and Mark, you know, you were on, it really got me excited. So I'm really Aww. thankful to be here, and it's great to meet you. Getting people excited about Star Trek. Yeah, and you yeah. haven't seen each other in a long time, Yeah, right? that's right. Reunited that's right. in person for the first time in years because of yeah. the Photopod show. That's right. Ooh. Really? <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, why, why is that? What do you mean? So we met uh, when I was living up in Alaska, and we met through martial arts class. Oh. And we became friends, we stayed in contact, we started talking over the phone, we started talking about all of our favorite nerdy, geeky, whatever you want to call it stuff, including Star Trek, and we said, hey, we should try recording this and seeing if more than three people listen. Yeah, we <laughs> And more than three people are listening, apparently, yeah. so. Um, yeah. we learned my wife's not one of them, though. Well, nah, my wife, neither. Yeah. Nor, nor, <laughs> nor my children, so. <laughs> my wife, yeah, not, we, we learned more about each other, like when you moved, actually. Yeah. Learned a lot, lot more about each other. Yeah. Than so that was a, you know, unfortunately you did move, but it was a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So See, it's been great. Foster. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been awesome. Um, you know, we, we were talking about, you know, what we're going to do here and what we're going to ask you guys and so forth. And it's really easy to ask Star Trek questions, obviously. I've been to enough conventions, you guys get asked the same questions over and over and over again. By the way, for those of you watching, if you have not watched this show, uh, one of my absolute favorite episodes that you guys have done so far, and this is no slide against the guests you've had on, is the episode about your life, Dominic. Oh. Whoa, episode. Look at that. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. It was. I keep looking, because <laughs> neither I got shit either. numbers. <laughs> yeah. Tom keeps being like, hey, well, I'm I only like, like seven and a half thousand. I'm 160,000 in two weeks. I'm still a 6.6. 6. <laughs> it's been out for a year. <laughs> well, it really was fantastic. Oh, uh, nice. Just hearing about your journey or how you got here. And I was wondering, for those who haven't heard, Give us maybe just a brief synopsis of how you became an actor. Oh. oh. <laughs> Gosh, how did I? I'm brief. Yeah, brief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten very kind offer. <laughs> we had three hours for the show. <laughs> uh, I started uh, prep school. Uh, an English mistress decided it was high time that this school put on a school play. I'd never shown any interest. Um, I hadn't had any you know, reason to show an interest. And in we all auditioned for this an uh, odd piece about uh, Victorian orphans living on rooftops in, uh, in London in the late 1800s. It was a sort of uh, play about a charity called Dr. Bernardo. And I played, and I ended up getting the lead part, and uh, Cripple, his name was. And uh, the leader of this gang of orphans on these rooftops, uh, and he had a gammy leg and a crutch that he beat the other boys into submission with. <laughs> and, still has um, it. Yeah, still got <laughs> it. Still has that crutch. <laughs> um, and that was the beginning of it, really. And How old were you? I was maybe 11, 12 wow. at most. Yeah, not much. Yeah, I think 11 or 12. And then it, it all sort of sort of snowballed after. I went to the next school I went to was one of those boys boarding schools in England called Uppingham. And they, I think to this day, probably still have the largest privately owned theater in England. Mm. It was the old gym uh, that was converted into a three, 400 seater. And uh, there was a man there. There's always one guy, isn't there, that, that, that sort of, you know, fosters that uh, talent. His name was Chris Richardson. God bless him. And um, the culmination of that was me playing Laertes in Hamlet. And uh, he took me, it was only three nights performance, one of those school plays. And uh, oddly enough, Rowan Atkinson reviewed that play. And um, it's a strange... If, Your school play? Yeah, he sure did. Uh, Chris directed his first... Was he a, was he a theater reviewer at the time? No, he, no, he wasn't. He was, he was doing the Oxford <coughs> Review. Uh, and Chris directed Howard Goodall, R Rowan Atkinson, Richard Curtis, who wrote the reviews. Good Lord. Yeah, I know. Wow. I, mean, quite a, I had dinner with them all one night at the Lake Isle as a 10 to 17-year-old. And I just played Laertes. And Chris got Rowan to review this, this, the school play in the Uppingham School magazine. Uh, so I, uh, I can even quote that now. Uh, and he singled me out. And then Chris took me aside one night on the last night or the night of the penultimate night. He said, I'll, I'll deny it if you, if you tell anyone this. <laughs> but you might think about doing this for a living. And then the next, you know, then I went to London to go to university. And I was at UCL, and they have the what's called the Collegiate Theatre, and it was like an off West End theatre. It's now called the Bloomsbury. 
And I did a lot of plays in there in those three years. I read, sort of read history. I mean, I was, I read a little bit of history. <laughs> I was either in the theater or at the embassy club. <laughs> um, were you a danceaholic? I was a danceaholic. You were a danceaholic. I was the late, it was, I went to the university in 79. So 79, 80, 81, those were the three years that uh, That's the year Studio, was Studio 54 came to London. I was born really? in 79. Yeah, shut up. And I'm old. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, then there was the, I call these the dark years, and I've often heard people, the, the years where you, God, what am I going to do? University ends. What am I going to do? Am I, gonna, am I actually going to do this? And uh, there were a couple of years that I was staring at the TV at home, you know, not doing much. And, uh, and then I got, myself, I, sort of back, I got myself in a corner and it was like, well, okay, I got nothing to lose. Let's, let's, uh, let's give it a shot. And um, yeah, it was a tough road. Didn't get into drama school. I was now 23. And they were all, you know, all the drama school applicants were all 18, 19. I got close to getting in at Central, which is a really good school in London. Uh, I got to the semi-finals, I would say. But uh, didn't get in. And then there was, uh, I was doing dance classes at the Pineapple Dance Studios. And uh, there was a lovely uh, black uh, gay man called John John who uh, had a drag act. And uh, he, one of the boys dropped out of the drag act. And he said, so Dom, do you want to do the drag act with me? And I was like, yeah, no, John, I'm, ser I'm serious, going to be a serious actor, man. And then six months later, no closer to that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a deep breath. My mum sent me a good luck card to the, uh, we opened at the, uh, what was it called? The Kit Kat Club, I think, in Bournemouth. A really hardcore, you know, plaid shirt, gay bar. And uh, we were called Feelings Mutual. <laughs> <laughs> and my mum sent me a, I plucked up the courage to tell her what I was doing. I ended up in a pair of black lycra shorts every night with the bum cut out in red piping. <laughs> <laughs> I was young. <laughs> and, uh, and my mum sent me a good luck card to that bar. Oh, God bless her. It said, um, break a leg, my darling boy. Uh, here's hope, hoping your bottom gets you to the top. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Dom... Uh, it's 40 years ago. Also, uh, your mother uh, housed actually. She did, yeah. She was, a, she was what we call a theatrical landlady, Patsy Power. <laughs> she was famous in Leicester at the Haymarket Theatre. Uh, they all stayed at my mum's house. Uh, I've actually worked with people after the you fact. stayed there? Yeah. And I'm like, we actually know each other. How do we know? What? You stayed at Patsy Powers. Like, what the? F <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, God bless Patsy. She's gone now. But um, she was an actress, and uh, my father rescued her from the devil's jaw, he always thought. <laughs> and, um, but she saw me get Star Trek, so God mm. bless. That was a nice thing. And then I was also, do you remember when I was with Jill? The first fiance. Um, oh, we did a whole photo spread for Hello Magazine. Do you remember that? Did you do one of those? No. You know Hello Magazine? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. People they, Magazine for David, England. David Beckham was in that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they came around my house. They photographed me and Jill in the jacuzzi. Uh, and my, when my mum passed away and I went back to pack up her house, I found a really folded up, well-used copy of Hello Magazine in oh, the person great. she would use that she'd obviously trolled around Lester going, this is my boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, God bless her. So that's how I got started. Well, thank God you got into acting because otherwise we wouldn't have Malcolm Reed, right? No. Uh, so. So which drama school did you go to? <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's awesome. What drag act were you in? <laughs> Not one. <laughs> one of the things we, we love to learn about people is, like when you were growing up, who were your, your role models? Like who did you look up to? Like who helped shape who you are today? Love learning that. Oh, I was telling oh. someone earlier, I don't want to do all the talking, but Rod Steiger. <laughs> Uh, I watched Rod Steiger's movies as an eight, nine, before I'd done that little prep school play. And I remember looking at him playing those parts in the, you know, he played eight parts in one movie. 
And I was like, yeah, that looks like, I remember thinking that looks like fun. And then I got to work with him. Uh, I did a film called Hollywood, The Hollywood Sign. And it was, I think, if not the last, the penultimate film he ever made before he passed away. And uh, it was a real trip uh, working with him. He'd come up, he was, by then he had, his legs were pretty shot and he had two walking sticks and his wife was helping him. And he, but he still was f***ing <laughs> shit. He'd come on to set, look out, look out, there's a legend coming through. <laughs> <laughs> he was a joy, an absolute joy. So, treat. Uh, yeah, inspirations, as a kid, I had no interest in being an actor. I didn't become or even interested in acting until I was 21 years old. Now you guys make me sick. I uh, know, sorry. <laughs> you know, I wanted to be Reggie Jackson. I wanted to be, you know, I was sporty, you know, I was an athlete. And, um, but I will say that when I began to study acting, um, Gary Cooper mm -hmm. was one of my favorites. Um, I remember Marvin Rush, our DP, likening you, likening you to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, he said as much. And um, uh, yeah, my inspirations as a young person just had nothing to do with what I wound up doing. And that's sort of the funny thing about how life finds its way to you and you to it. Isn't it? Yeah. And uh, I, I became an actor really sort of by for the girls. For girls. Uh... <laughs> That's a very common answer on the show. That's a very common answer. Yeah. It's the most common uh, answer. Yeah, I'd, I'd gone to college to play football and I played for a couple of years and wasn't doing well in college, hadn't done well in high school. I wouldn't have gotten into college had I not played football. And a um, couple of years into it, I was um, at a party one time, sort of floundering in my sophomore year. And this woman, I found myself in a conversation with who I never, I didn't know. And halfway through our conversation, she was like, have you, you, have you ever acted before? And I said, <laughs> no. <laughs> Previously to this, my experience with any sort of acting theater at all was a touring performance of Cats I took a girl to, and a community theater production of A Funny Thing Happened what a in the, day. the Forum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, a, and an English class read-through of Our Town. So nothing. And, and, and I said, well, why? And she goes, I don't know. I think you'd be good at it. There was a play being um, auditioned after this um, Thanksgiving break, and, uh, and she said, I think you should do it. And I said, well, okay. My, my mother had been an actor in high school. And, um, and I said, will you be there? She was like, yeah, I'll be there. So go home, work with my mother on uh, the audition for uh, two one acts. Lone Star and Laundry and Bourbon. There's, there's three guys in the male version, there's three women in the other, in the, uh, in, in the second act, the other part. And um, came in and I had no idea what I was, I had no idea what I was doing. But for some reason, I decided that I was just gonna listen and then answer. That's it. Which is it. That's the best thing you can do. Mm -hmm. If you can just relax and listen and respond and then filter it through you, that's acting. And so I went and did the first night of auditions and walked out. I mean, you know, I was on the football team and I sort of yelled to the heavens. I'm not kidding. I did kind of, ha ah. And I quit football the next day and I never saw that girl again. <laughs> no, no, she wasn't there at the audition. She was like an angel. I mean, I truly believe this. She was, I don't I, I asked about her. Do you know this girl? She has sort of like you know, dark hair down to her shoulders. And they were like, no. We're going to build. No idea. No idea. And, um, How about that? and that just began it. And that literally changed my life. It changed my experience as a student. It changed my experience um, I began to think of myself as an artist. I began to read, began to listen to things differently. And yeah, I have a phantom to thank for why I'm sitting up here. Yeah, how about that? Yeah. 
then the NFL missed you. <laughs> yeah, well, I, it's clear I wasn't going pro. <laughs> So in a lot of episodes of Star Trek, they deal with time travel. And if you guys could time travel back in time and give yourselves, a younger version of yourself, one piece of advice, what would that be? <laughs> I was gonna ask all our cast members, uh, yeah, if you had your time over again, would you be an actor? <laughs> with what you know now? I think I probably would. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I, I'm, I'm glad I chose that path. I, th I do believe in Dharma. I believe in it's within you. You're, um, what you were meant to do sounds a bit deep, but uh, what your best path might be. Um, the be what advice? Uh, yeah, I've been a, you know, I've sweated bullets about my career and life in general, uh, and not lived as quite in the moment as you might have, as one might live, you know, you and you have right now, this is it. Every minute is right, every minute of your life is live right now. And I've spent a lot of time, we talked with Michael Dawn about this, he, he has a propensity to go back to the past and imagine what if he'd done this, what if he'd taken mm -hmm. that, what if he'd done this move. Mm -hmm. Mine is much more when I get to here. When the carrot's always, they're just there. And uh, yeah, that, that causes, you, you miss it. <laughs> you, I'm, I'm just getting it right now at uh, 61 and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's right now. And if they could tap me on the shoulder 25 years ago mm. and go, sweetheart, yeah, mm. look up. It's right now. Look up. Yeah, I, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change a goddamn thing. I'm but I'm handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I change it? What I, what I would say to my younger self was, would be, um, honestly, is to uh, work harder. Hmm. Oh. Is to work harder and to be, um, and to recognize opportunities hmm. then and not see them in the past. Mm -hmm. But again, I wouldn't change, you know, listen, I'm here talking to you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, 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 done, I've done a thing that I think is remarkable, which is to play this part in this franchise that I had no idea what the uh, influence and effect it might have. And, and I would even say to myself to, to just um, recognize that earlier. You know, it's taken me really honestly until we've done this show to not feel as, I, I've always kind of been, I've not taken, it's the wrong way to put this, but I'm gonna say it, is, is to not take advantage of the opportunity that I had having done uh, a Plague Trip. Um, and, and I think I waited longer than I should have to believe in that and to believe in, uh, in, in this, whole community and, right. and my role in it and and if, if i were if i could tell my 32 year old self yeah you know, be sensitive to this more than you are yeah embrace it embrace it more than Fully. i did yeah put and, your arms around it and when i and i i'm truly i I'm, I'm so thankful for the fact that this this podcast and this experience that we've all had yeah. has has really it's changed my outlook. It's not changed it. It has deepened. so heavily influenced my outlook and deepened it, deepened it in a way that I never knew. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. And since watching now the shows and from multiple casts and years of different seasons of different uh, 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 shows and series, uh, you know, my appreciation for for what you've all appreciated for so long, and now I get it. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> truly. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I do, I get it. I gotta tell you, they, they just hit on something that's really fun for me. It's now a year into this. Suddenly we can talk about Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I and he's like, oh, I saw that episode, and Quark said this, and I'm yeah. like, oh my God. I, was I always thought that I, if I was to do something, I've never, I've, I've been the worst I've never self-promoted myself. It's just not something I've ever done. It's not who I am. And I don't think of this as this is self-promotion. 
I did initially, but I don't any longer. I feel as though this is sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I didn't know that before. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's powerful. Yeah, it really is. So if, if you couldn't, if you were not in the acting profession, if there was another vocation or another Lawyer. profession. <laughs> Lawyer. <laughs> well, yeah, what would Same you be interested in? Same shit, different okay. lines. <laughs> okay. I'd be a teacher. Uh, Same shit, oh, different lines. I'd be a teacher. Uh, oh, wow. Politician, <laughs> politician, lawyer, teacher, actor. Uh, I'd be uh, a house husband. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, 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 still, I still want to teach. I still think that that's something that I'm going to do. I'm pretty sure that's what you want to be right now. You're just in denial. <laughs> You're not talking to him. No, no, no. No, I want to teach. I really want to teach. <laughs> so one of the things we've done in our podcast is we've had two different episodes that we call the Great Nerd Debate. Okay. The first episode of the Great Nerd Debate was the, uh, what you would might call the Nerd Civil War, and that's Star Trek versus Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So the there second no versus Star there's no versus. I'm out of here. So the second one we did was we thought, you know, what is the greatest two decades for movies, not TV shows or anything else, just movies in history. And we narrowed it down to the 1980s and the 1990s. And if you guys had to choose a decade, yeah. what decade between the 1980s and 1990s would you Cast your vote as the greatest decade of all time. Is it between the eight? We only have that as a choice. Those are the only two the, choices in the I'd poll. go with the seventies. You see. Well, we don't have it. We don't have that as an option. <laughs> we don't know. Well, that's because they're kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There were some amazing films made in the seventies, mate. Um, uh, the nineties. Oh. Uh, oh, that was my answer. I'd say the nineties. I would say that was our answer. I mean, that I, I would yeah. probably go with the nineties. The, the eighties. I mean, the music alone. Some of that music. The school. Yeah. Howard alone. the Duck was made in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite film. Yeah, but so was Back to the Future and Ghostbusters. And well, yeah. Yeah. Several of the Star, Star Trek, Trek movies. movies. Yeah. Star Trek. Uh, oh, I forgot. This is or, the great nerd debate. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana forgot, Jones. Forgot Indiana. my peeps. <laughs> Blade Runner. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Blade Let me think Runner. about this. Yes. My problem with the 80s <laughs> are the soundtracks. They're terrible. They're ter I just They're said just that. terrible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they were terrible. You know, that, that sack. <laughs> Listen, I also blame, I'm sorry, A Hard Day's Night ruined the English half comedy, which is the musical interlude. God damn it. Get rid of the musical interlude. They're in every British comedy. Are they? They are. I, I'm look, Watch I would, one. I wouldn't say the, the Beatles weren't the best ensemble. They were the first cast. one to do that. They were, huh? Yeah. I took a film class in college. And yeah, I, guess so. I was actually told <laughs> that the Beatles... <laughs> Who fucking ragging on the Beatles? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, Chris, I guess this one goes to you. And they said the 90s. So, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the 80s and you were the 90s and I lost oh, again. Yeah. I mean, the guy, you can't argue with the 90s, Titanic, uh, yeah. uh, Star Trek VI, yeah. <laughs> uh, Star Trek Generations, Star Trek First Contact. I have different films I like. Uh, none of, none Starship of Troopers. Uh, Jungle to Jungle. Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> the Matrix. Matrix. Yeah. You're not helping that. my cause here, Mark. You're not ah. helping at all. It's, That's a really wonderful question. Thank you. Yes. Well, well thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for having thank us up you. here. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys. Really thank you. appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you very much. Nice to see you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, mate. God bless you. Thank you. Good luck with that. That's so, a goal. So, we've got like. Give, three give it up minutes. one more time for the random red shirts. Woo! We, we've got like, like three minutes left. Until we need to wrap it up and get over to the Fox and the Hounds. Yeah, we got to wrap up. Fox so and Hounds. Whatever the hell it's called. What are we missing on our list here? Well, I thought we were going to the cock in the bottle. <laughs> oh, we got to do the trivia. <laughs> trivia. <laughs> well, I thought we were going to the queen's legs first, and the king's arms. First, first, first. No, wait a second. It, it can't take longer than five minutes. Uh, yeah, we'll go real fast. But we have mm -hmm. to start one thing quick. Who here has won or lost Star Trek trivia because of these guys? Oh, oh! You get a car. You get a car. You get a car. <laughs> I'm not, you know, listen. I'm always. I'm telling the truth. You get a car. It's... 
There's one down here. <laughs> oh. Listen, I'm a man of my word. You get a car. <laughs> So Carter's That's been awesome. promising cars to people who win, and it was a it was a bullshit promise. So we figured we'd give a car to everyone with. Aww. Not bullshit. You got cars. You have got cars. cars. You got cars. <laughs> See? A brand new car. <laughs> Can't drive it. <laughs> you you got a brand new car, sponsored in part by Nosotros Tequila. <laughs> <laughs> For all your driving needs. <laughs> Oh, driving driving. Okay. Yep. All right, yeah, I mean, so a couple trivia idea. questions. Okay. What does T'Pol's great grandmother introduce to Earth in 1957? Oh, A, Mark. the boogie woogie. <laughs> B, liquid paper. C, Teflon. D, Velcro. Mark, Connor. Mark, oh. Mark. What? It's, Mark. B, it's B, Teflon, isn't it? Wait, wait, wait. Shh. Well, what? Who, Mark. It's, Mark. I, I think it was Mark. Mark. Velcro. Mark. It is Velcro. It is Velcro. Yeah. 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 So that the kid can go to college. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's right. So. Carbon Creek. Which Carbon of the Creek. following directors never directed an episode of Enterprise? LeVar Burton, Michael Dorn, Jonathan Frakes, Robert Duncan. Don Connor. Oh. I think I was there. Was Dominic. Yeah. Jonathan I, Frakes. It is Jonathan Frakes. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Score is one to one. It's one Thanks, to one. Dominic. So we'll do one more as a tiebreaker. I ain't okay. fucking around. One more as a tiebreaker. Here we go. Mm -hmm. How was Phlox injured in San Francisco? Oh. A, xenophobic assault. B, terrorist bombing. C, gas station hot dog. I hope it's that. D, earth virus. Mark. Dunk. It was Mark. Mark, 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 Mark. Uh, xenophobic assault. That is correct. Yeah. Oh! He did the blowfish face. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Xenophobic yeah. assault. Give it up yeah. one more time for Shuttle Pod. Good job. <laughs> Mark one again. Uh, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, treks and trekkers, I believe that's an episode of the Shuttle Pod show. Yay. Yay. And uh, <laughs> thank you for all, all of you for being our guest. And uh, we're going to move this on to not the, but Fox, Fox and Hounds. And Hound. The Fox and Hounds. Is it fo the Fox and Hounds? It's just Fox the Fox and the, the Fox and the Hounds? It's not the Hounds, though. <laughs> <laughs> British pubs. Good God. Why don't you call it Bills or Bobs or Joes? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're going to wrap this up. But before we leave, we have a special message from Andrew Robinson. Like, subscribe, and join us on Patreon. We just want to thank... Uh, our special guests so much for uh, taking the time out to come. And you're, we, well, you're welcome. And, and we, so anyway, uh, <laughs> everyone say no, goodbye. Jeff, to you stay Cunnings, here. Right? You stay here. I don't think I'm on. Am I on? Yeah. Well, I've got a song I want to sing. <laughs> anyway, so I want to start with Jeffrey Combs, Jeffrey ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much uh, for your talent. Thank you so much. Jeffrey's going to tie me up. That's we, his <laughs> we, we do this because we love you, boys. We do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, man. And, and we love you as well. Uh, so can we get a big hand for Jeffrey Combs, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you. Oh, unless we forget. What's your name? <laughs> Vaughn Armstrong. Big round of applause for Vaughn Armstrong. Vaughn Armstrong. Vaughn. You know, we had, we had Vaughn for, uh, for two nights in a row, and uh, we may never get him again. So uh, be thankful that we had him. And th Vaughn, thank you so much for coming thank you, and helping us out. Yeah. Really, really appreciate it. Like you said, How about a hand for Vaughn Armstrong? He was a pretty fucking good Captain Archer, I thought. Right? Kind of like, you know. And he can actually play a harmonica. If we can't get Scott, <laughs> if, we, yeah, if, we can, if we can't get Scott on the podcast, it might be Vaughn. <laughs> uh, and uh, next we want to have out uh, Nana Visitor. <laughs> Nana, Nana. Is, is by far got the greatest hits on our podcast. No kidding. She's well past 135 million views. I think 160, views. 70,000 views already. Uh, it didn't go unnoticed Nana. that it was the first episode I wasn't in. <laughs> <laughs> that 
That might be sins. Um. <laughs> anyway, the Nav's been here for two nights. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this. Yeah, thank it you, was darling. So fun. Thank, thank you. Yeah, you bless you. Love you all. Big round for the for, for Nav. Thank you, darling. Sirach Lofton, can you come out here, sir? Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Sirach. Blessed to have Sirach out here. We had a fantastic time. Uh, um, Want to do it again? Please join us. And also, do you know he's got a podcast? <laughs> he does have a podcast. <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen. Sirach Lofton. Last but not least, the OG, the Godfather, Walter Koenig. Woo! Walter! It's a, it's a tall order to get the biggest laugh in a comedy. It is the tallest order. <laughs> and, and, and Walter thank you, Walter. thank you so much, Walter, for, for being a part of this. Thank, thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, Walter Koenig. I'm Connor, that's Dom, and we're also leaving. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Like, subscribe, and join us on Patreon.